I come home one day, mm-hmm. and I th- that's the story I tell you, I was about to tell you there. Yeah. And then I, and Kubert used to, um, he lived in the same neighborhood, and he used to live on the corner, and literally he lived one house away from me across the street. Wow. Like literally, that. yeah. He lived right on the corner. I lived right across the street, and right next to uh, uh, the apartment complex. Is he still at that same house? He's not there. His mom's still there, I think. Okay. But, um, and I had seen him around the neighborhood, and... And this one's around 85, right? This is like, uh, this is around 80, this is around 85. And then prior to that, I would, I would see him, you know, with his parents. And I didn't really know who he was. You know, he kind of just kept to himself. And, mm-hmm. and my other friends up the street knew him more. And I was like, what's up with that cat? I go, he's always like to himself, never wants to invite nobody, he doesn't want to play. So, you know, he was just that way. You know what I mean? And it's like, all right, cool. He doesn't want to interact with nobody and blah, blah. blah. So then so one he day, was, so Kubert was like an introvert back in the. He, yeah, early he was very days. introvert. He he uh, yeah, he just didn't like. He just didn't. He's kind of an ass. To <laughs> you, to he was. Uh, I'm not kidding. You. He was pretty much an ass. And and see, and that's he, how you a get lo- it. A lot of the guys didn't really kind of vibe him. And you know, I mean, I can name the guys off the bat. You know, Romeo. <laughs> I mean, it, it just goes on. His brothers. We all lived up the street. We all knew each other. You know, what I mean, we're all neighborhood kids. We all knew each other. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I try to interact with them because. I I had heard he had a big uh, Shogun robot collection. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's all into that. And he still. did, yeah. He's yeah. still into that stuff. So that's what made me. I was like, oh, cool. You know, Shogun he's he's warriors. he's into he's into that. I go, yeah. I love all that kind of stuff. I love yeah. Ultraman, all that kind of stuff. Oh, we were just talking about Ultraman earlier. Me. Right. <laughs> so I try to I try to connect him, and he didn't want to connect with me. Yeah, like he was, I was like, like yeah, screw it. You know, the guys yeah. to himself. And then one day, um, one day I'm at home. It was a uh, afternoon around three o'clock. This is like. When people are getting off. Oh yeah, this is the juicy Cuber, Cuber story. Yeah, so he ca- yeah, so um, I get it. I'm upstairs in the apartment and uh, it rings the door. I hear a doorbell around three thirty around that time. I go downstairs and it's it's and it's Rich. I, I call him Rich. I don't call yeah. him Cubert, but yeah, Cubert. Um, he was downstairs with his friend uh, Dino. He had that, which was his partner when they when they did life, lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And I and I immediately I kind of just like question mark in my head like. Okay, what the hell? This is the first connection he's ever tried with me. All right, what's all right, what's up? You know, and he was like, "Hey, what's going on?" R- you know, Lou. Hey, what's going on? You know, it's Dino. And it's like, oh, what's going on? Blah blah. blah. I go, "Hey, I, I heard you DJ." I go, "Yeah, I do." I go, um, "I DJ, but I uh, I do something else." You know, I I, I just scratch because uh, when when we did music nonstop, the um, key, uh, keys used to be that kind of more like dance DJ, and then yeah, Steve. Yeah. Uh, would do more of the hip hop. Mm-hmm. I ended up being the cutter. Yeah, that was the terminology. The You're the cutter. Yeah, he just does the cutting. He just comes in and he just cuts. And that was my job uh, when we did gigs. I didn't mix. Yeah, I would mix once in a while. Yeah, and my but my you would just come on to do the highlights. Just light, just a scratch. Yeah, cause yeah. And because back then uh, it, it would it would magnetize people on the dance floor. It was I a agree. trip. It, and it, it was kind of like the first performance of a scratch guy. Yeah, it, it was like doing those dances. It still does. It still does, right? Yeah. So. Um, so, um, so Cuba's there on a mission. So the Cuba's there on a mission. He, he, cause he already had seen DJ he already, he already had liked it. I guess he'd seen it. I think he said that he, he went to a, a school dance, either a bow or something. I can't remember where he'd seen it, but he, he was, he liked it. He like, he was like, well, this is cool DJing, whatever. Right. But then I told him, I go, I go, what I do is, is sort of DJ, but it's not, I go, I'm a cutter. And he was kind of like, what's cutter? cutting? What the hell's a cutter? I go, yeah. I go, co- I go. Come back later, or you know, and come upstairs, and I'll show you. Came back, Dino, came upstairs, and then I'll never forget it. He walks in. I have my bed's to the left, and right, right. As soon as you go to the doorway, that's where the equipment is. Two twelve runners, and I had a sixteen fifty Newmark. Yes, I had that too. So he sits in the bed, and right. He says, and then I was like, okay, you ready? Go ahead. So this is what I do. Okay, this is called cutting. This is just you know me on one turntable, and I just play a beat. On electro beat, and I just started scratching my ass off. What were you scratching on? Was it the change you know, of beat? I think uh. I think it was it. <laughs> yeah. Not fish, I, and I can't remember the uh, beat I was scratching to. Shame, too. yeah. But I think I was scratching it. I yeah. think. And all I know is that I look over, and then as soon as I finish, and uh, Cuber's face was like, like what the hell did I just see? It just like opened a whole new world. You completely. did Completely. You started. He it. said, "What the hell is this?" From that point on, for two, th- I would say about two, by the third month, he was already doing stuff on his own. There you go. But Bingo. for two months, he would call me every day. 
at least 10, 20 times a day. There's no cell phone, so he's calling me on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, lines. what the hell is this guy? And he would call me. He goes, hey, show me that thing. He'd get it. Yeah. Instantly, he'd get it. Then he'd, and I'd show him another one. He'd get it. Then he started coming. Then he started calling me. He said, hey, check this out. I started, he started creating his own stuff. I was yeah. like, let me see what you got. Sure enough, he impressed me. I was like, whoa, what the fuck did you just create? I go, that's sick. What is that? So with those, with, with those, with those phone calls, you know, uh, I kind of started shaping not only me, but also kind of shaping him because he had never exactly. seen what, what I was doing. I, I already had um, – my style is very old school, mixed in with the new school because I've done it for so long. So I have a lot of old school f style and flavor in me. Influences. So a lot of that, you know, was um, – was shown to Q. Yeah. And but when he started creating his own stuff, he actually started creating, you know, his own his own thing. And uh, but we would be on the phone literally for two months. He called me every single day. And then it wasn't until the third month. And then I started realizing why. Like, wow. Wow. This is the guy I've been trying to look for. And uh, I get a phone call from Shortcut and he goes, hey, Lou, and it was the evening. He goes, hey, what's going on, man? He goes, I go, I go, aren't you by LA? He goes, yeah. I go, I go, I'm at this DJ battle. He goes, uh, there's this, there's this kid with this funny name that really is a big fan of you. He goes, he, he really wants to talk to you. He goes, you got time to talk to him? I go, yeah, sure, why not? He goes, but well, you're gonna trip off his name, though. I go, you know, I'm thinking, like, well, how trippy more can it be? I go, his name is Babu. Yeah. And I'm like, DJ Babu. I go, that is a trippy name. I go, that's cool. I'll talk to him. Yeah. And uh, and he and this was a DJ company. This is when he didn't even live in LA. He was yeah. living in the hills. So was the Beat Junkies already made at that point? Not, I, I, no. Okay. It, it, it wasn't even. It I don't was think, just him. I, I think it was just him. Yeah, because yeah. he uh, he was a young. I remember he was just a young kid that was doing a local battle in the hills of LA somewhere. It wasn't even a serious one. Mm -hmm. No one knew who Babu was. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he calls. I I, I I talked to him. And he goes. He goes here. I'm gonna pass the phone to him. I go, what's and up? these are landlines. And these are like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, what's going on? You know, bad. You know, I go, yeah, my name's Babu. He go, you know, we started, you know, he started talking to me. He goes, yeah. He goes, he goes, you're influenced. You know, I've seen those, I've heard those shows. And Sugar Fat goes, that's some dope shit, you know. And then, uh, and then that's when I started talking to him about how we shouldn't be called DJs no more. I go, I go, I'm on a mission right now, Babu. I go, I, I want to start something called turntables. And I go, I got, I got the word turntables. I go, we are musicians, not. DJs anymore. I go. We need to start really changing because it's it's gone to the point where it's pretty annoying. It's yeah, like it's yeah. bugging me. It's like no, I'm a guy who uses one sound. I create and manipulate it in a musical form. On a I'm, turntable. I don't. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. It's one fader and one and one turntable. That is it. That's all you got to work with. And you need to work with that without anything else around you, just like a guitar player would or a bass player would. So I, I actually schooled him for a very long time, and it made total sense. When I, and I, I said, you know what? Spread the word around. I go, that's what I'm going to be calling. That's what I think should be the, the, the termolo terminology for all of us and stuff. I don't know where this whole thing where he kind of claims it, mm -hmm. which is kind of um, – uh, it's a little disappointing because I, I like Babu. I've never had a problem with the Beat Junkies. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I've always, we've always, you know, th they know me. You know, I've always, I was always good friends with Rimmatic and never had any beef with the Beat Junkies or even Babu. Mm -hmm. I'm just very disappointed and very surprised that Babu would, would want to take credit for something that I have started way before he was born, yeah. first of all, yeah. and way before he started. Yeah. And so you're setting the record straight here on the I'm slam show. I'm setting the record straight because, you know, it needs to be told, yeah. you know, and that DJ I'm Diz. sorry, but the lies need to stop. And whatever product you're selling on your Beat Junkie site needs to stop. That's his turntables because you do not own it. I have all the proof at my house. I have the very first flyer that has the word turntablist. You find me something before that. You can claim the word all you want, but I will guarantee you one million percent that you will not find a flyer with the name turntablist on it. Send I me that. Send me that. Image. I have I it, see it, and it was a tour that I did in Australia. Okay. I finally decided that I'm gonna title, try this, title and, it. and I'm gonna and I'm gonna go by this. This is something new that I'm gonna start, and it was a, and I still have it. It was a tour that I did in Australia in ninety five. Scan it or send me now. the image. I want to see. That's it. the very first. There's nothing else. 
before that. That's amazing. Nothing. And that was the very beginning of uh, the pretty much turntail and the, and the whole thing. And because uh, it's, I think what people, I, I think like, like I, I even see it now, like the turntablism is not really about what they're doing now. It, turntablism, a turntable is, is a person who uses a turntable as a musical instrument. Correct. You create sounds in, in a musical pattern. You, you put your soul into it and you, uh, your expression and comes you through. Yeah, you change your expression, and this is your language. Yes. You know, this is completely totally, I mean, this is it's like a guitar. I mean, it's a bass. This, yeah, is, this yeah. is your instrument. It's a piano. The, 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 the way you should be thinking is way more than what you're doing now, the button, all this kind of stuff is they're, they're using the word turntablism in DJ, like they're calling themselves DJ, turntablist, et cetera, et cetera. All yeah, these. yeah, yeah. And it's not that. It's... It's being a musician bubble. It's completely in its own realm, and it's there's not a there's not a lot of us. There's not there's only a few cats that kind of take it there. There's not a lot, and yeah, it's being mixed. It's being it's being uh, the words being used in a different way, and it's and like I said, you know, I I uh, I hope Babu can realize one day like. I hope he can remember that conversation we had. <laughs> Seriously, because I'm like very floored that he wouldn't remember that conversation. And well, and I th I think after being on this show, it's going to spread like wildfire. Oh, I hope it does. Cause <laughs> he, you know, and, and I tr and I, I I have it here too. I, I mean, I, I've tried I've tried to contact him. You know, yeah. and he doesn't call me Disc. He calls me Lou. Yeah. So I know for damn sure that's his Facebook. Yeah. And when I asked him about it, I never got a response back. Yeah. And well, that's weird for me that. Well, I think we might have you, to. You, you answer me back, Lou, when I say, hey, what's up, Bab? How you been? Et cetera. As soon as I ask him about turntable list, yeah. no response. I contact him three, four times after that, no response. Ooh. I even contacted Beat Junkie's website. Yeah. No response. Well, I, I find that kind of weird. Yeah, I do so, too. So either, either we can meet face to face and deal with this on stage, or we deal this with a lie detector that simple we'll be on stage we'll put a light detector you hook me up you hook me up you can access all the questions you want wow. and that goes for anybody anybody that tries to take anything that i've created that goes for anybody any anybody that out there and you know who you are you know who you are i can go on the list of names that i have helped and things that i've created that people try to take credit for and it's just it's mind-blowing yeah it really is because i have a lot of respect for all the cats that I have met in, in my life and work with. Gotcha. And they know that. Yeah. They know how cool I am and how dope I am to work with. Not a hard dude to work with. But you don't go and walk away and you stab me in the back and you take credit for stuff that I have done. It doesn't work like that. That's why I'm here trying to set the record straight because it's pretty disrespectful and it's kind of like a slap to the face, you know, coming from people that I used to hang with as brothers and stuff. And all of a sudden, they go ahead and do this. Yeah. You know, well, it, it's hurtful. But yeah. what can you do in this day and age? You know, and this and, and a lot of this stuff was prior to YouTube. This is this is before YouTube. Yeah, before the whole like, the whole thing, internet online yeah. stuff. Yeah. So when you go on YouTube and you see this stuff, you're kind of like, 